Next up on the new inbox PlayStation hardware thing that we're doing uh, is PS4 from 2013 with the officially licensed vertical stand, uh, also new in box as well. And so let's take these out, set them up, check out that early firmware, play a game or two, and then throw it into the display cabinet. Now, I think a lot of you might remember that I bought this in a collection update a long time ago, which I told you back then this is what I was doing with all this stuff. Uh, so it's cool to have that new because that is a glossy black reflective finish, which means if you buy a used one, it's probably not going to look all that good. Uh, but confession with this particular PlayStation 4. So this is uh, not something where I had to go out and buy it and pay well over MSRP. I bought this day one on the day PS4 came out. I'd gotten two units, and like back then I did not think I was doing this where I wanted nice example hardware for a display cabinet. Uh, but basically I went to GameStop day one, got a console that way, but I also had one pre-ordered on Amazon, which, you know, at that point I, I had a pre-order secured. Um, and this was when it was very early on with the channel. So essentially I, I kept that console thinking I might need it for something. And of course it did pop up occasionally where, uh, that's the one thing I also have to confess. This console is not like brand new sealed, but it's new as in it's only, it's, it's seldom been taken out. So I do believe I've already harvested the uh, the DualShock 4 out of this. I did because it's not in there anymore. Um, but the, the main purpose here, the thing that we're primarily looking for is that <laughs> really the top faceplate looking robust and clean and uh, basically untouched. But I mean, I, I leave all this stuff in here because I'm a psycho with that, that sort of stuff. So this is the official earbud that they would give you back then, right? Like super cheap and whatnot, but that was their way of packaging in um, headphones for every user, which was new coming out of PlayStation 3. Um, still have the, the cables here that are totally new in box. So yeah, again, this is a, this is a unit that I've had in stored for a long time uh, as the original buyer of this. So at least in that case, <clears throat> I, I know the history of this machine. The history is I have it. Um, now the, the times that I took it out, that would be for <laughs> really the, the only reason and at, uh, only reason at the time, excuse me, was to download and store PT on a second console because it's like, it's an unknown sort of thing, right? When they were delisting it, we didn't know exactly what was going to happen. Um, in terms of if you'd be able to re-download it or not, or if the exploit of how to get PT onto a PlayStation 4, you know what I mean? It was just, there was a lot of unknowns. And also, even at the time, like I, I wasn't that privy to like games being dumped online. So either way, I, I made sure to, you know, get PT on another console. So technically this, this machine is not on like day one firmware. The earliest firmware it has, I believe is like 2.5, I want to think. So it's still pre, uh, pre redesign, which was like early 2016, uh, 16 when they refreshed the PS4 UI. But you can tell right away that this machine is mostly clean. Let's get a nice close up view. Very nice, very nice, very sexy. I mean, even the, the matte finish too, right? Like that can still scuff up and things like that. That can still look pretty rough over time. So uh, it's the same thing where it's good example hardware. Even that center section can get, cause that's a, a slight glossy finish as well. So that can look pretty bad, especially with uh, folks trying to plug things into the uh, USB port. So this is a genuine launch model PlayStation 4 from North America looking crispy. Now I think it would be fair to say that for PS4, uh, one, it was pretty weird that like this is a, a third party stand officially licensed, but this was like the stand they used in all marketing materials. And pretty much any time they ever advertised PlayStation 4, it was always in a vertical position. But I find that PS4 is the one machine out of the entire PlayStation lineup, and maybe, maybe there are other ones that um, we're sort of in a similar spot. Maybe PS2 would be the best case here, but I feel like for most people, like the vast majority, they were all just keeping this thing horizontal. Not many were doing vertical because you would have to buy the stand, right? I mean, you didn't have to, but 
you know, PS4 is very thin, and so it wasn't really like, I, I think most people did not want to do that. <laughs> they didn't want to keep it vertical without this, but they're not trying to drop, you know, 20 something dollars to get this thing. So I, I just feel like it was very uncommon for people to really keep it vertical. Yeah, see, like chances are this was getting scuffed up just as easily, if not more, than the top panel on the, the PS4. So even if somebody did have this, Probably not looking all that clean today. So it's cool to have this being presented the way that marketing uh, marketing materials always had PS4 uh, looking. There it is, the OG PlayStation 4 UI, uh, which doesn't look that much different to what we have nowadays, but uh, you can see the, the classic waves in the background saying, welcome back to PlayStation. So we'll press the PS button and <laughs> hey, look at that old picture, huh? Ah, look who had a better hairline back then. I am using the controller, yes. And I did, I, it turns out I did install a few things. I might have just like transferred over. Like did a, a, a proper transfer of all this data prior. But yeah, there's, there's PT. Uh, connect to the internet and view the latest information for this application. I don't know why there would be a lock on it though. It should be playable offline. Well, either way, let's just confirm what firmware we're on here. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I thought. 2.51. So that was like, as far as I know, the earliest official firmware that can play PT on uh, standard retail PS4s. So got that going on. And there's not much I can look at. There was a slight, <laughs> there was a very small screen where you could catch my uh, tro my original trophy data before the console stayed offline. And some notifications from yeah, 2018 was when I booted it up, uh, booted it up for something, and then PT was installed. Uh, well, April 29th, 2015. Here's the old notification center. Again, it's just like cool to see the the old waves in the background. But yeah, that's where the system software was installed, put in PT, called it a day. Oh, that's why it's not launching. My the CR2032 battery's dead. To use this content, you must set the date and time using the internet. Oh no. What? The battery died. Oh, man. Well, I was going to launch PT, but the battery died. So I guess I'll overlay some footage <laughs> and just talk about it that way. Because uh, what I wanted to say about PT while playing it is that I actually owe a lot to this game for me because I've always been, and I, I still am to a degree, but I just don't really play horror games that much, right? And even though it's a playable teaser, it's not a full product. It never got to be a full product. I just, I, I love how this game or this uh, playable teaser was initially revealed, what they were pretending it was when it turned out to be something else, the obscurity of trying to reach the end and just the, the design of it. And, and how it, it sort of unfolds slowly. The, and the sound design is amazing. I love how Lisa tracks you throughout the, uh, the hallway sequen uh, sequences. And so playing this sort of made me overcome my fear of playing most horror games, right? I feel like if I had gotten through PT, then I can kind of play anything in, in a weird way. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, but for me... Um, that's what I re really appreciate about PT, and I still find it is one of the most frightening experiences you can play playing a video game. All right, well, now that that's all done, we can throw this PS4 into the display, which, looking really crispy so far, got the PSP, Vita, two PS3s, now PS4. Probably not going to do uh, chassis redesigns where those are the slim consoles. Uh, I always kind of figured this was going to be a Gen 1 uh, display. 
And, uh, I mean, I might do, like, uh, sort of oddball things, uh, PSP Go, PSP Street. Um, I've got clean examples of those. Uh, got to throw in a PlayStation X and a Pocket Station in there. So uh, it will change, but for now, that's sort of what I kind of pictured in my head. But uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching, and uh, I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.